Hi, I'm Kirsten McKinnon and welcome to Activate Me TV. Recently, I was having some struggles with being able to move forward. I'd had a lot of challenges this year and I was really looking for something to help me feel less overwhelmed. And I did some research and I came across Josh McDonald. Now, Josh McDonald is a certified hypnotherapist and rapid transformational therapist trained by Marissa Peer. I would like to welcome Josh McDonald. Welcome, Josh. Thanks, Kirsten. I'm, I'm really excited to be here talking to you today. I, I think that I'm excited to talk to you too, because I think it's really important that um, we share the work that you do, because I certainly feel like I benefited from working with you, and I think that other people can as well. So I think I, I'm really interested in understanding your journey of where you started out in your career, or, or, and then how you've, um, the work that you've done to develop the services that you have now, and, and how, um, what that work means to you. So if you'd like to just sort of talk to us a little bit about that journey, that would be great. Yeah, of course. Um, it was about 15 years ago that I started to get into personal development. So I started with the very first book that I ever got in personal development is still my absolute favorite book. It was Your Erroneous Zones by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Um, absolutely brilliant book. And that got me started on my journey uh, probably about 10 years ago, I started then taking on clients, so moving more into uh, the business side of personal development. I felt like I'd worked on myself enough that I could start to help other people as well in their journey. And so over the last 10 years where I've been helping people, uh, I've started to transition more into hypnotherapy. The reason behind that is because I'd done a session with one of my friends and at the time, I was feeling, uh, I was not motivated. I was feeling uh, a little bit depressed and I was feeling as well like I just, I had no energy throughout the day. And she was learning how to do hypnosis. So she asked me if she could, you know, do a practice session on me. And I said, of course, let's, let's give it a try. And at the time, I thought there was no way I could be hypnotized. I wasn't the sort of person that could be hypnotized. And we went through the session and she gave me a suggestion to try and open my eyes when my, my eyelids felt really heavy. And when I did that and I couldn't open my eyes, my brain went, oh, my God, I think I'm hypnotized. But it didn't even feel like it at the time. It just it felt like I was just talking to her with my eyes closed. So I found that really interesting. And uh, for about a month after that, my motivation, and my energy levels just came up. And I, I thought that was really interesting as well and then so after a month I started to uh, go back a little bit to the old habits go back to not having motivation not having the energy and I knew that hypnotherapy worked um, I just needed to find a way for it to work for me so I did a bit of research like you um, I found RTT and Marissa P and when I found that I thought this might be the one forward for me so I wanted to make sure that it would actually work before I went and, and learned how to do it so I booked in a hypnotherapy session an RTT session and same thing happened around this time I sort of I'd, I'd had a long long um, long-term tonsillitis and so my energy levels were really low at this point I was waking up at 8 55 I was rolling out of bed and getting on the computer finishing at five o'clock and just going straight to the lounge. I had absolutely no energy, no motivation to do anything. And I did this session. And the next day I woke up at 6 a.m. I started to clean the house. I went out for a walk, did work, finished, finished work. I kept on cleaning the house, just had so much motivation and energy. And this lasted for a couple of months. And I thought, yeah, this is it. This is the way to do it. So I learned, I learned RTT, I got my certification, and I've been taking on clients since, helping them to, um, uh, to really improve their lives. That's fantastic. And it's funny you say that because that's exactly how I felt. Like I, I was struggling to get out of bed and I just wasn't motivated. And it didn't matter how many inspirational self-development books I was reading, I just wasn't getting anywhere. And so I just, that's I, exactly the same. Like, having what going through the process and then literally just getting I, I progressively got out of bed earlier and earlier to then just and also then start my day with exercise and things like that it's actually quite phenomenal and I, I think the other thing too is I really appreciate the fact that you've described the process of, of being under hypnosis because I hadn't been under hypnosis before and I kind of imagined it to be in a certain way in that I'd be yeah. sort of like but you're kind of still conscious, but you're detached from, yep. it's, it's really an unusual experience. And to be honest, I was fearful before I did it. I, I, I was sort of fearful because I hadn't done it before, but it's actually 
a much less stressful process than I thought because you are conscious, but you're completely focused. It's like being yeah. hyper focused and it, it's yeah. just amazing. So, yeah, exactly. um, so in terms of, so you've obviously done hypnotherapy. Um, can you tell us a bit about the process? Um, so if someone was like, I, I know, but obviously people who haven't gone through it, just the journey that you take people on from when they initially contact you and then sort of just give a bit of a description about that so that they get a bit more familiar with that? Yeah, of course. So first thing that I do is I have a consultation because what I really need to understand is uh, what level of support do you need and what level you're at at the moment and whether or not the services that I've got can help you to uh, achieve the results that you're looking to achieve. There's no point in putting money down for a service that's just not going to help you. So I really need to have that first consultation, understand um, where you're at. And through that consultation as well, I, I, I determine whether or not I'm the person that can help you or if I can refer you to one of my colleagues or even to a different service. Um, so as I said, I've been in personal development for um, professional, professionally for 10 years. So I've got a, a wide network of um, other professionals that I can refer people to. Um, once I've determined that, yes, we are people who are compatible and we can work together and you've determined that, you know, you'd like to work with me as well, then we go in and we, we schedule the first session. The process through hypnotherapy is, is very simple, from uh, very easy from your perspective. You're not really expected to do much except for close your eyes and talk. Um, a lot of people think that, uh, similar to you, Kirsten, they think that there's is some sort of state of being that you need to be in and it's not that at all it, it actually is a state of hyper awareness it's the same state that you're in when you are daydreaming and you're in the car and you don't know how you got from point a to point b because you've been daydreaming the whole time so it's a natural state for you to be in um, and really what it is is just getting you down to a level where your conscious mind can go to sleep and so your subconscious mind can take the wheel so you won't feel any different or you're not likely to feel any different it will just feel like you're talking with your eyes closed and you might see or you might hear or you might even just have feelings like physical sensations in the body or emotions in the body. Um, all of those are perfectly natural and you'll find one sense is stronger than the other two senses. And all I'm asking you to do at that point is just describe what's going on. If you have an emotion in your body, you're telling me about that emotion and then the emotion starts to bring up some pictures and then you have a memory and then we start to work through that memory to understand what's going on. And what we're looking for in that memory is to understand what belief it was that you've created at that age so that we can work on breaking that belief and then we can install new beliefs that work for you. What I find with most of my clients is that the beliefs that, they, that, that are running their life today, that are running their behaviours today, are beliefs that they had uh, and created when they were a child. And so they worked for them as a child. They worked for them in the world that they needed to navigate as a child where you've got a parent who sets boundaries and sets rules and you've got to work within those boundaries and rules, where you've got school that you've got to go to that has different boundaries and different rules, and you've got a social life with other children that you've got to learn how to interact with. So the beliefs that you create at that age are not the beliefs that you need as an adult where you don't no longer have those rules. You don't have a parent anymore that sets boundaries for you. You set your own boundaries. So I like to say to my clients sometimes, would you let a three-year-old look after your taxes for you, look after your finances? Drive because that's really what you're doing. You're letting a three-year-old or, or the beliefs of a three-year-old um, determine your behaviours today. So that's what we're doing is we're breaking those beliefs and then we're just installing new beliefs through hypnosis. Yeah, and it's funny because I think that, you know, I, I've had an interest in um, personal professional development for a really long time and, and, and read, you know, a variety of different things, done courses and things like that. But you, I arrived at a place where I realized that, and I mean, it's commonly known that you are basically, your subconscious runs the show and the the program that the subconscious is running on was created by beliefs from your childhood. So that's why a lot of, I think, feeling stuck and not making progress is because you need a full reset. And that was where I got to. I was just like, I, I was sort of, consciously trying to do things but my subconscious was working against me so and that's that's the beauty of doing it it's like it's a deep reset like it's really like nothing else and it's like you can keep going and doing different courses and things like that but I think if you want to get bigger and, and sort of more substantial results immediately and that was the thing that shocked me was just the fact that how quickly it that reset kicked in and um yeah it was just it was quite extraordinary and I, I think the other thing that I following that session 
having that recording where because basically you do the original reset but then you sort of have to continue on to embed it further and it was like this unfolding because in the first week like literally the first couple of days or so changes but then it continues on and you see it unfolding more and more to the point where I still like I think the recommendation is to listen to it at least once a day or maybe morning and night like I'm now you know past the first month and I still listen to it because I find it super motivating and I think yeah so um but it, it is it's like a deep reset so um yeah I like have you because obviously you've been doing this for a long time now have you got particular examples of where you've seen like where people have been really shocked by the results that they got um can you tell us about some of those examples yeah, I remember the first time that I got a big wake up call and it, I mean, it was it was great because it was validation for myself. Um, I knew it worked for me, but hearing how it worked for other people was uh, it was even better because I knew that it was then something that just it, it's amazing. It can help the world. Um, the first big shock that I got was when I had one of my clients tell me that she'd been seeing a psychologist for 10 years and hadn't had the same breakthrough that she had after one session with me. So I thought that was absolutely amazing. And it is because when you're doing talk therapy, you're trying to get to the subconscious beliefs through the conscious layer of the brain. And your conscious and your subconscious don't operate at the same time. It's either one or the other. So trying to get to the, the subconscious level through the conscious level, it just takes a lot, lot longer. Um, you, you tend to find that it unfolds um, over years rather than over a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And so that was a big eye opener for me. Um, and that same client, she told me that after seeing me, it was almost like night and day in terms of how she felt uh, before the session and how she felt after the session. And that was on confidence and specifically in confidence in relationships uh, because she'd been single for a long time. Um, other clients that I'd seen who, uh, who'd really shocked me with their transformation were um, smoking clients who, after 42 years, there was one particular one who she gave up. She had absolutely no cravings, uh, and 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 she said that she she didn't even miss them. Um, it's almost like they never existed. Like she was not that she was an ex-smoker, but that she was a non-smoker. Like she never actually picked up the cigarettes before. Um, there's another one that I saw who uh, anxiety manifested as. IBS and she ended up having um, stomach problems and uh, she got to the point where she couldn't leave her house in the morning without going toilet sort of seven or eight times because her anxiety would start to play up and she'd have thoughts running through her mind that said, um, you know, uh, what if you miss the toilet? What if there's, what if you have to sit on the train for half an hour? You don't know where the next toilet is. What if you need to go? So it would stop her from having to go, uh, so stop her from leaving to even go to work in the morning. And after a session, she said the next day she was able, she still had some of those thoughts, but they were no longer immobilizing her. So they weren't stopping her anymore. They didn't give her the pressure in the, in the stomach that she was feeling. They were just thoughts at this point. Um, and over the time, over the period of 30 days when she was listening to the recording, even those thoughts started to disappear. So I think it's absolutely amazing just how easy it is to rewire the brain and just the results that you can get from it. And I think as humans, we tend to forget the pain sometimes. We tend to forget the place that we were in. So one of the things that's really important as well is, it's, is to understand where you are now and sort of on a scale of one to 10, what's your pain? now and then in 30 days reassessing that just to see what those results look like because it's when you can see that that you start to see just how amazing this process is yeah no I think one of the things that you suggested that I do was to sort of rate my motivation and, and a variety of other different things and I did and then I went back and I was really amazed at how low I'd scored a lot of things and then how far it had changed in you know, like even up the halfway point of 15, like 15 days. And then when I got to 30 and I think we spoke again, I was just like, I think it's really important that you do that, that you write down where you're at so that you can see the journey that you, you go on because it's really quite startling. Um, but yeah. I think that's fantastic because basically there's a variety of different reasons why people must seek your help. So, you know, um, wanting to quit smoking, health issues, relationships and things like that. Do you have like, um, you see um, in terms of your uh, clients that you work with, what sort of age bracket or like, is there, um, is there, you do, do you tend to work with a, a particular age bracket or have you, do you work with, you know, students who are struggling? Like um, what sort of the, the, the range of um, clients that you work with? 
So I work with uh, all age ranges. Um, I've worked with, uh, I think the oldest woman that I worked with was 62. Um, I, I, I am willing to work on children. So hypnotherapy works on children who are nine or above. Um, sort of between seven and nine, you are, uh, it's, you, you're not able, well, it's not likely that you're going to regress um, to find where the beliefs are because you're still sort of uh, at that young age where you are still creating beliefs. Um, younger than seven, you're still technically in hypnotherapy. So, uh, so in um, hypnosis. So your brain waves are operating at an alpha level or below, and alpha is the first level of uh, hypnotherapy. Above alpha is beta, and that's your normal waking everyday state. And you actually don't, as a as a human, your brain doesn't develop to 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 be able to operate at the beta brain wave levels until you're seven. So um, before seven, you're, you're already in hypnosis. And that's why it's so easy to pick up those beliefs as well. Um, and that's also why, you know, you, you are still operating on those same beliefs because you don't go back into alpha to replace them once they've been created. So age ranges are from nine till, you know, as old as you would like to be. If you are in your 90s and you want to change, um, that's fine. The types of people that I see and the types of people I'm really passionate about helping uh, are people who had narcissistic parents or who suffered narcissistic abuse. So when I first started on this journey, I knew I wanted to help people who had survived some sort of trauma um, through their childhood. And trauma, I think, is it's hugely misunderstood. And people only see trauma as being a big event that happened to them, surviving a natural disaster, surviving physical abuse, surviving neglect, that sort of thing. Trauma is the smaller things as well. So it could be something as simple as your parents both needed to work so that you could they could put food on the table at night. And so you had to go to school and then straight into after school care and then didn't see your parents very often. And your brain might interpret that as being neglected, um, but really your parents are not at fault here. And it, th there's actually no one that's at fault here. Um, a lot of people don't see that as being trauma, but it actually is. And the brain doesn't determine uh, how how severe the trauma is. It just sees trauma as being trauma. Yeah. So that's where I sort of started was helping people work through their trauma. And I've, I've been working through now developing a specific course and program for people who are uh, adult children of narcissists because I've seen a lot of those people come through with the same problems and it's really the same sort of treatment that, uh, that I help them with. So um, I found that that's the, the most rewarding for me is helping those sort of people. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so are you, can you tell me, like, is that program something that's available now or when is that something you're working on that will be available soon? Yeah, so I'm working on it currently. Um, it will be available at the beginning of the next year. So, uh, it, I mean, I've got a, uh, if, if you'd like to uh, join up for a, um, uh, the waiting list for the program, there is a site that you can go to and Obviously, I'll give you that link so you can put it in the description. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be available very soon. Oh, fantastic. Um, and I think it's really important because when I first contacted you, I was like, well, to go under hypnotherapy, you would have to be in the same room. But I was like, really surprised at how effective it is that you can do it remotely. So can you just sort of talk to that a little bit so that people can understand yeah. that you could basically help anyone anywhere as long as they've got an internet connection so I think that's kind of important to sort of explain that because that means that you're much more accessible and it's and just the advantages of doing it remotely like would yep. you like that? yeah yeah of course and, and it is uh, I find I get results three times faster and three times more profound when I do it over zoom um, which obviously during the COVID lockdown, I needed to uh, find a way to still be able to see clients and Zoom was obviously the, the way to go. The reason I found or the reason I believe is because your subconscious mind, when I'm in the room with you, you can feel my presence being there. So we're all aware that, you know, you can feel when, when someone's watching you, um, if you have your eyes closed, you can feel that there's someone in the room. If you're watching a movie and someone comes into the room, you can feel that they're there. You can feel the presence around you. Um, I won't go into it too much, but I believe that that has to do with the, uh, with the quantum field. So, which is uh, another uh, interest point of mine. So what I found working remotely and working over Zoom is that people aren't able to feel my presence in the room. And what that does for the subconscious mind is it says that those suggestions that I'm giving you, uh, your subconscious mind goes, this must be like, for example, when I was doing it with you, Kirsten, your subconscious mind would have said, oh, this must be 
This must be Kirsten giving me these suggestions. That means that it's going to believe those suggestions faster. It's going to pick up those suggestions faster and it's going to do more with those suggestions because it knows that that's what you want now. It's not someone else telling you what you want. It's you telling yourself what you want. So that's why I think I've found that um, with, with Zoom, it is uh, the, the change is a lot more profound. Yeah, which is fantastic because it just means that you're a lot more accessible, which is exactly. absolutely brilliant. And so what's your... Obviously, this is a body of work that you've been working on for a period of time and in terms of building your expertise and um, what's your vision for like the work that you're doing? Like, is there like understanding that you want to do the um, program for working with children of narcissists, but is there any sort of like, um, do you have like a, a vision for, for the work that you're doing um, into the future, like the legacy that you would like to leave behind? Yeah, I think where I am at the moment, I'm taking on one-on-one -on -one clients and it's incredibly rewarding, but it's also a little bit limiting. So what I can see for the long-term future, and this is by no means even, even the next five years sort of thing, but what I can see for the long-term future is really getting an understanding and systemizing the way that I'm doing the work that I'm doing at the moment, getting the results that I'm getting at the moment and finding a way to get that out to the rest of the world so that other people can get the same sort of transformation that I'm helping people get. It's important to remember as well that it's not actually me that's doing the work. It's it's the client that's doing the work. I'm just facilitating. And so it's it's my knowledge and my expertise of the tools that you can use, the way that you can apply those tools and how those tools may need to be applied to your specific situation that I need to find a way to systemize. So over the next coming sort of five, 10 years, that's what, that's what I'll really be um, uh, looking to do and, and researching and, and documenting so that I can help other people get the same results that that my clients get with me. Yeah, I have I have full faith that you'll be able to pull that off because I think to having that background of analysis and systems and things like that, um, and even the fact that you've moved moved into this, um, you know, using Zoom so effectively, I think I think um, that I can fully see you doing that, and I think that that would be brilliant because. I don't. Th I think that you have a gift, and I think that the more people that you can connect with and to to get from where they are to a better feeling place is just a gift that keeps giving. So I think that that's absolutely brilliant. So, um, if people are interested in connecting with you, so obviously what you've got, you will give them the link for the um, the new program. But in terms of if someone wants to connect with you for um, to see if you're a fit, um, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Yep. So the best way is via email um, because I'm obviously seeing clients throughout the day. So I may not be able to answer my phone. So the best way is via email and that is support at joshmcdonald.com.au. Um, that's also my website, joshmcdonald.com.au. So if you wanted to get on there and see any other information that I've got, I do have some articles on there and I'm updating that as I go as well. Um, I've recently transitioned over to a new platform. So um uh, it's got a new look and feel to it as well, if you've seen my website before, but uh, they would be the best ways to contact. Absolutely brilliant. And I'll put links down in the description as well so people can sort of just to click onto it and 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 sort of connect with you. So thank you so much for um, speaking with me today because, yeah, I, I know that I definitely benefited from hugely from connecting with you and I hope that other people are encouraged to reach out and and to take a step to changing their own lives in a better way. So thanks so much, Josh. Yeah, thanks, Kirsten. Really appreciated it.